I've been asked to talk on the management of large povascular axis. So what constitutes a large povascular axis is no longer a matter of conjecture. It is generally agreed upon that axis size of nine French or higher should be considered a large pore axis. And these large pore axes we commonly employ for all these procedures, transcathed aortic valve, aortic stent grafts, uh, LA appendage occluders, mitral clip device, transcathed mitral valve replacement, and uh, the hemodynamic support systems. Now, despite advances in technology and downsizing of the delivery systems, for some of these procedures, we still require accesses which are as large as 24 French for the thoracic aortic stent grafts. And to talk about the complications associated with these or the issues associated with this large pore accesses are, should a complication occur, leads to prolonged hospitalization, sometimes transfusion requirement, and needless to say, increases the procedural morbidity and mortality. And such, fact, uh, such complications do occur in up to one-fifth of patients undergoing procedures through large pore accesses. And people have identified patients who are at risk for vascular access complications, the fairer sex, extremes of weight, the obese, naturally, and very thin individuals. And of course, needless to say, anticoagulant use. So if you take a good access, half the job is done. And as in any chip procedure, a successful procedure starts with a safe vascular access and ends with an effective hemostasis. Traditionally, we were all using surgical cut-down and closure, which leads to prolonged procedural time, prolonged hospitalization, increased likelihood of wound infection. And currently, I would be correct if I say that surgical cut-down these days are limited to patients who are extremely obese and those who have a femoral graft, a surgical graft, uh, because it has its own issues and uh, difficulty in achieving hemostasis. Generally, for most of these large uh, bore accesses, we use a femoral artery. It can be either fluoroscopy guided, but the problem with fluoroscopy guidance, it's highly operator dependent. And close to one third of these patients have a high femoral artery bifurcation, so very often you require a marker such as a pigtail catheter from the contralateral axis, which could be supplemented by a contrast injection uh, to guide you to puncture the common femoral. Now the ultrasound has advantages over fluoroscopy because it helps you to identify the bifurcation in longitudinal view, but even the textbooks talk about the longitudinal view, that is, or the in-plane view, I have found it always better to actually use the out-of-plane or the cross-sectional view because there, if you move the probe up and down, you end up finding the bifurcation. And the advantage of ultrasound as compared to fluoroscopy guidance is that your number of attempts and the time to gain access are significantly lower under ultrasound guidance. And also, it would help you prevent entry of the calcium site. Now, this is all that is required. You can actually even visualize. You have the vein on the right, there is medially, and all that you need is just to identify that you're entering the common femoral artery. You can start imaging earlier itself. You can actually even visualize the wire passing, but then for that you require another person. So if you're doing it alone, this is all that is required. Now, Traditionally, the vascular accesses were managed by manual compression. 
And it is reasonable to say that up to 12 French on the arterial side and up to 14 French on the venous side can be managed with mantle compression, but gently it's painful, requires much longer to achieve hemostasis, prolonged immobilization, fatigue of the healthcare worker. Vascular complications is debatable for smaller sizes, that is, from 9 to 12, probably not, but with the larger vascular axis, this is not feasible. Now, these days, vascular closure devices are available, and the benefits as compared to mantle compression would be patient comfort, immediate, or at least early mobility, and reduce vascular complications. Now, this may not be applicable for like 9 or 10, wherein we have studies which have shown that mantle compression is as good as vascular closure devices. But if you look at this, there has been a declining rate of vascular complications with time with increased use of vascular closure devices. Now, the closure devices that are available are all this. Essentially, they are either suture-based or collagen-based. The suture base is more physiological because it just employs a suture on either side of the, arterium, uh, the arteriotomy site, thereby mimicking surgical closure. The collagen base, on the other hand, uh, requires a collagen and a bioresorbable anchor to keep the collagen from uh, you know, entering the bed vessel. Both are pretty easy to deploy. And the advantage of a suture based technique is that immediate reaccess is possible and you're not leaving anything behind. Whereas with the collagen-based technique, you require a time period of at least 60 days. It could extend up to 90 days with some of these devices. Now, more commonly employed uh, procedures requiring large port accesses for most interventionists would be transcatheter valve procedures. And generally, you're looking at 14 French. A minimum of 14 French, it could be much higher. Now, this is what is available to us is basically only the proglide, the angioseal, and the obtura. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the proglide, minimal inflammatory response, less need for blood transfusion, decreased hospitalization, minimal intravascular footprint, and most importantly, no reaccess restrictions. You can even puncture the very next day. Now, the, prob the disadvantages would be, in calcific vessels, the sutures might not hold, number one. If at all it holds, sometimes it might not be possible to oppose the edges so that persistent bleeding is an issue. And as compared to collagen-based devices, there is a learning curve, especially when you deal with a large four axes requiring more than one proglide. The angio seal, on the other hand, uh, it is available only for smaller size devices, I mean, uh, vascular access uh, uh, options. That is six and eight French. You can use it up to nine French. Truly not a large bore vascular access closure device, but it can be used along with the proglide. And it has basically, all collagen-based devices have the anchor, the collagen, and the suture, which holds the anchor and the collagen together. The problems are allergic reaction to collagen, if at all there's an inadvertent, inadvertent mixing with blood. And the greatest problem, I would say, is a reaccess only after 60 days. Now, the newer addition to this is the Optura, which is pretty similar, but I would say easier to use, simply because you don't need to actually take out the sheath. It is so user-friendly. But here again, if you're using it for large pore accesses, you need an additional uh, device. Here, it requires 90 days for complete absorption. The steps are pretty simple. And again, available uh, in two different sizes, six and eight. Um, six can be used for six and seven, and eight for eight and nine. So what are the options available for closure? One is multiple proglides. It could be generally two, in the 10 o'clock and two o'clock position, or it could be even three. 10, 12, and 2 clock positions. Or else, 
hybrid procedures, the proglide and the collagen-based device, which is what I was talking about earlier. And what we have found is proglide and mantle compression, which is again off-label. So what you do is you convert it to a smaller axis. Use one proglide and keep a six French or a seven French sheath in, and you can remove it at leisure, like what you would have done had you access the vessel with a six or seven French, and it works well. Now, the safety and efficacy of this hybrid vascular, vascular closure has been tested, and we have data. There are several papers which talk about combining the proglide and a collagen-based device. And some of these papers have gone on to say that it works better as compared to two proglides. Now, the problem here is if you're doing a TAVA and you're sure that you don't require that access again for the next 90 days, you can use this combination. But when you're doing endovascular aneurysm repairs, and should a problem arise, I would want to preserve those accesses. So in those situations, I would prefer a suture-based device rather than a hybrid of using collagen, and you take away that option of using the access immediately. So even for this TAVIS, you know, we also started using two proglides, as was the recommendation, 14 French increasing to 18 French. But what you find on the left is you have that indentation of the two, switch, the, the two proglides. And on the right, this is same procedure being performed using a single proglide. And I think this is more pleasing to the eye as compared to the use of two proglides, which again is not what the company or the, or the manufacturer suggests. Now, suppose you have patients like this, extremely bad abdomen. Herein, I would want to achieve hemostasis at you know, the best possible way. I don't want any complications. Any surgical intervention in this guy is going to be catastrophic. So we had actually even to tape his entire abdomen on either side using plasters. Here, we used three proglides. Even though this was only a 14 French device, we ended up using three proglides because we wanted complete hemostasis at the end of the procedure. Any hematoma could be difficult to manage. Now, in certain situations, what are those situations? You know that the vessel is diseased, especially in the elderly, not large enough to accommodate two proglides. Sometimes we end up using this combination. And our experience is more with proglide and the obtura. I don't have much of experience with the angioseal in this situation. We have used it earlier for our standard angioplasties. That also works well. Here again, the vessel looks good. So one of the other things that we've realized is if the femorals are diseased, you don't use a sheath. Go bare so that you are downsizing the delivery system by at least one French, if not more. And it works better. So when we compare our experience with these two procedures, the TAVA and the IWA, now close to two-thirds of cases, we end up using only one proglide and nothing else for our TAVA procedures. Whereas at least half the time for the endovascular, we end up using two, especially on the side where you require the larger axis. Now, I was talking about the femorals. It could be large pore access elsewhere. Like in this case, you require to access the axillary, which can be done under ultrasound guidance, but preferably an angiographic uh, uh, visualization is better. You access using a micropuncture set. And here, you can still use a proglide, but what we have found is you can use a uh, self-expanding cupboard stent. And if I have just a minute more, I can show you the greatest advantage is 
all that you need to, need to do, keep that in place. It is at least one to two millimeters larger than the size of the, the, the diameter of the vessel. You pull out the, uh, once it, it will not be completely deployed because it is constrained by the sheath. Once you pull out the sheath, it just snaps back into position and you can have my word on it, not a drop of blood comes out. So, unfortunately, those four centimeter uh, stent grafts these days are very difficult to procure. And the stent just snaps back into position. And you can see what the axis looks like. Now, last but not the least, when you have no axes such as these, occlusion of the abdominal aorta, a type 3 aortic arch, which makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to access from above. For this aneurysm, what have we done? We have access from the venous side, the cavo aortic, finish the procedure, close the aortic rend using a VSD occluder, and as we do in the venous side, a figure of eight to close the venous axis. So, in conclusion, managing large pore vascular axis, start with safe axis practices, achieve effective hemostasis, importantly, monitor for complications and pick up those complications early, and most importantly, we need to realize that the axis issues could ultimately determine the outcome of interventions. Thank you. Great talk, Ashish. Balashan, you want to ask something? Ashish, uh, you told the axis using either a blind method, using a fluoro, or an ultrasound. And you are, I think, because you are into these procedures, aortic procedures, TAVR and everything, you are, every day, I think, you are having a large bore axis. With, Not really. Every day, most That's likely. a huge exaggeration. Uh, but then, which is your preferred method? And second is, what are the usual complications that occurs following the use of an angio seal uh, and problematic complications following the use of a uh, suture device? So suture device, as I said, uh, my, my, our preference generally is okay. under visualization. Blind, sometimes if you're very sure because you have the CT these days and the CT tells you there is not, no anterior calcification, adequate sized and it is not a high bifurcation. These days we go bare. If there is any difficulty, or if you anticipate difficulty in terms of one, anterior calcification, or you know, as I said, the bifurcation is not very low, below the femoral head, then you prefer ultrasound. The contralateral we don't use these days, trying to actually come from the radial so that we are undersizing the axis and we need to access only one groin. So for Tavis, that's it. And where would I, uh, when the problems with, with uh, suture devices, as I said, calcific flux. Sometimes it's difficult to actually achieve hemostasis. And therein, whatever you do, of course, you can use collagen. That is only, I mean, probably your savior. Other thing, as I said, put a five frame, I mean, a six French or a seven French device there. Your proglide is in place and you're checking the ACT, remove it after four to six hours or whatever, like you would have done otherwise, and it works well. Yeah. Uh, this hybrid, uh, pretty interested in that. So when you take a 14 French uh, tower, and how much can you downsize the proglide to? Can you come to seven, or yes. you have to come to eight? Seven, seven or even six, you can do that. With one proglide, you can downsize to six or seven, and that is the, the concept of the hybrid is basically at undersizing it. Our extension is not to use the second device at all, right. but so, the manual compression. It's the same so thing. So what you can do is, what you're saying is, from 14, you put a seven, come down to seven, and then put a seven angio seal and come out. Exactly. Good. I think uh, we had a uh, good discussion, and uh, uh, thank you, Ashish. Thank you. Pleasure.